Hello and welcome back to another episode from Driving Brun. Today we have something a little bit special for you. We have 10 YouTube secrets and Easter eggs that you never knew existed. No matter how often you go on YouTube, chances are you don't know everything about it. Today we're going to go over 10 different secrets and Easter eggs related to YouTube. Now YouTube's been known to put out the odd little Easter egg now and again and Google themselves have put out quite a few little Easter eggs and hidden functions and things like that for people to explore and find. Most tend to end up going unknown and then they kind of get released by Google afterwards and then people go and find them. Others are just stuff that exist but you just don't know what their functions like when you add speech marks or brackets and things like that to certain text. Now these are 10 secrets and easter eggs that you can explore right now or just as soon as you finish watching the video. The video that we're watching is from Theo Joe. The link is in description as always. No matter how often you go on YouTube, chances are you don't know everything about it, obviously. So today we're going to go over 10 different secrets and Easter eggs related to YouTube. Some of them are just kind of curiosities. Others are actually sort of useful. So I've got 10 of them and why don't we just get started? This first one is probably going to blow your mind. It's a secret button that you have never seen before, even though it's been there the whole time. And it is the skip navigation button. To reveal this button, all you have to do is press the tab key a few times while on the YouTube homepage and then it will appear. Now this is not really a secret or an Easter egg, it's actually an accessibility feature. And the reason behind it is it's helpful to people who only navigate YouTube via the keyboard. So you probably know when you press tab it cycles through different links across the page and then you can press enter to click that link instead of using a mouse. But if you were to go through every single possible link it would take forever. So this skip navigation button is meant to be selected with just a couple tabs and then you press enter and then it skips to the actual video selection page. So if you are navigating YouTube using tabs, this is a very easy way to actually do that and get to the videos right away instead of having to go through every single possible link on the site. So just a cool little that's a great feature because I'm one of the people that kind of grew up with computers when computing was more in its infancy. Well, not infancy, but it was nowhere near as user friendly as what it is now, at least. And by that, I mean that when you used to type things in, you would often use the tab key to jump from one section to another because it will be quicker, especially when you're typing in things like your username and name password. That's where you kind of began to explore and realize that the tab key was quite a handy little function. And then you start to explore into pages and you press the tab key to skip around and it's nice and quick and easy. But the thing is, web pages are just so busy now with so many options, especially something like a YouTube homepage. You would, you would be there all day just trying to use the tab key. So that's a great feature, one that I didn't know existed because I've not tried to use the tab key on YouTube because exactly that, there's so many different options to come up every time you press the tab key that I would have, you know, I just knew it would be a bit of a nightmare or at least I thought it would have been. Every day is a school day. Little feature that you probably never even knew was there before. Okay, next up we have an Easter egg, and it is a unique title font for one particular video, which is called Too Many Cooks. You may have seen it. It's a video posted by Adult Swim back in 2014. It's possibly the strangest 11 minute video you could possibly imagine. If you've never seen it, highly recommend it. It's so bizarre, but also hilarious. It went completely viral. Anyways, you see on this page, YouTube employees, I guess, when it went viral, they made it as a joke to change the title font to be the same font that's used in the video. So you can actually see it to this day. If you just go on that page, you will see this unique font that does not appear anywhere else on the site at all. This isn't the only time. The thing is as well, back in 2014, YouTube was kind of a lot newer. So when things went viral, they really did stand out. Now you get things going viral quite often. It seems like there's two a day near enough. But in 2014, not so much. So when a video went viral, it's easy for it to stand out to YouTube and for them to actually pick it up. So that's quite a good fun one for them to have noticed it and then kind of jump in with it and keep the fun going. Time that YouTube has added an Easter egg to a video page though. Another one has to do with the video called Why Do YouTube Videos Freeze at 301 <laughs> yeah. by Number File, which was made several years ago back when YouTube think still actually reads. froze the view counter at 301 and no one really knew why that was. Obviously it was to verify views after a certain point, but that's what the video was explaining. And sure enough, YouTube as an Easter egg permanently froze the view count <laughs> on this video to be I think it's now about 50 where they freeze it now, 50, 51, somewhere around there. It probably freezes at 300 as well, but I know they just freeze about 50 originally. 
Brio One forever. So now, even if you go to that video to this day, even though the video obviously has a lot more than 301 views, they just kind of had <laughs> yeah, it as just an Easter egg to keep it at 301 to just show that on the video page. Okay, moving on, we have another Easter egg. And to do this one, on any video watch page, all you have to do is type out the word awesome. Don't type it into a text box as a comment, whatever. Just on the page, generally, just type out awesome. And it will actually change the progress bar to flash a bunch of different colors. Now, in this case, I'm going to slow down the playback of this screen capture so you can see the colors, but I don't know if this is like a trigger warning thing for anybody. It shouldn't, because I'm gonna slow it down. But if you are sensitive to light fluctuations or whatever, don't do this Easter egg yourself, but you can still see what it does in this case. And then to stop it from doing this, you type out awesome again, and then it goes back to normal. But still kind of cool, you can impress your friends or whatever. Okay. Quite a cool one. What would be even better is if, rather than just the bar, if the screen outside of, from your kind of, you know, the picture that you're watching, the main screen, you know, the main box, all of the white on the outside, if that was to flash, that would be even better, wouldn't it? Because you could use it as your actual disco light, play a bit of music through it. That'd be quite cool. YouTube, if you're listening. Okay, next up, we have a secret related to YouTube having to do with one YouTube channel in particular, possibly the weirdest channel in existence. This was quite a big thing when it was kind of, you know, doing the rounds. Nobody knew what it was for, and there's all sorts of conspiracies about it. But there were a couple of hints on the actual channel itself, which he might cover, we'll see since figured out what it's for, which I'll explain in a second. But if you go and look at it, it's clearly something extremely bizarre. Basically, for years, this YouTube channel would upload strange 11 second videos with random red and blue shapes literally every few seconds for years. And you can see that it has over 600,000 videos on this channel with over 163,000 plus subscribers from people who were just interested and subscribed to it. And what's also strange is you would think with a channel uploading this many videos that frequently that it would be deleted for posting spam or something like that, but it was not. It was allowed to continue for years. But it gets even weirder because every single one of the videos is literally just random red and blue shapes with random audio tones, except for three videos. One of them is a short video of just the Eiffel Tower lighting up. Another one is instead of having a red square or block, it's a red outline of Rick Astley, never gonna give you up. And the third different video is a paid access video that is the Aqua Teen Hunger Force dubbed in Spanish, and the only way to watch this video is to buy it using a French payment account. You can't pay for it anywhere else. So clearly a lot of people were very confused what the heck this channel was for you. <laughs> yeah, it was quite funny. But the clue that I thought was purposely put in there was the Wick Astley one. Because during a time when you had a lot of download and file sharing type sites, things like um, LimeWire and Pirate Bay, things like that, whatever they were called. Well, just as they were kind of getting closed down, there's also starting to be some changes on YouTube to make sure that copyrighted material couldn't be played on there. And if you did try to play it, or if you typed anything like that into Google, and you tried to watch it, and they didn't want you to watch it because it was covered under some sort of copyright, this is when all that sort of stuff was first starting to come out. So, you know, you, was, you wasn't really doing something wrong because it was only just becoming a thing when it was being classed as being wrong. But when you try to access it, what you got was a Google and YouTube video come up of Rick Astley singing, never going to give you up, because the next line along is, you know the rules and so do I. And so it was always a, a bit of a, a funny one. They purposely did it. You try to access some content that they don't want you to access because it's now apparently illegal in your country. Try to get a hold of it. You try to use a backdoor or something to get it. And then all of a sudden you get the YouTube or the Google video come up singing, you know the rules and so do I. And then it just won't do it. Just lets you, just stops, doesn't go any further, makes you move off to a different page. And so I thought that that's why they added the Rick Astley and they put it in the YouTube colors with the red and that sort of stuff. And the reason it's on this list is because eventually it was discovered through some investigation that it was created by Google and YouTube themselves. It turns out <laughs> the purpose of these weird videos was to test video quality upload. So it would automatically upload these random video files with these random shapes and then it would compare the 
original to the uploaded video quality and then do something with that information. We don't know, but it was completely automated and every few seconds it would do a test. Now at this point, the channel is not uploading at that rate anymore, obviously, but there are at the time of this video being uploaded some relatively recent videos that were uploaded you know, a couple months ago or so every once in a while. So you can go check for yourself to see maybe if there's any more recently uploaded, depending on when you're watching this. So yeah, definitely a strange YouTube channel. Maybe at some point I'll make an entire video talking about it, but I would consider this a secret for this video because for years YouTube did not exist well, it was a really big thing as well, and like you said, it was a long time before YouTube or Google or anybody started to kind of acknowledge that they knew what it was and that it was them. And then when people realised it was them, then a few more things started to make sense. But beforehand, no one had any idea. Because it hadn't been deleted, it was allowed to kind of exist, and most of the channels that you know were anything like that, they would have been knocked off the list and deleted. So that kind of give a bit of a hint that there might be something more unusual going on with it, but nobody really knew that. Quite a good funny one. Acknowledge that this was an official channel at all. No one knew what the heck it was for, but a lot of people knew about it. And eventually Google did release a kind of cryptic statement that did confirm that it was an official channel. Okay, moving on. This is one I would still consider a secret, and it is the picture-in-picture -picture Chrome extension by Google. This is an official Chrome extension for YouTube that adds a picture-in-picture -picture feature, though really this has not been promoted by Google at all. You just kind of have to know about it. And basically it allows you to create a picture-in-picture -picture little pop-up box of any video on YouTube that you're watching, and then you can keep watching it while you browse around the web on any website. Now YouTube does have a basic built-in picture-in-picture feature, but it only works on YouTube itself, whereas this extension allows you to go on any website and still watch. I yeah, and a lot of smartphones will have that now as well. If you're watching a YouTube video, then it will minimize into a smaller screen where you go off and do other stuff on your phone. And that also happens with your tablet. But on the computer, it just doesn't seem to be anywhere near as seamless. I know that the extension is supposed to be on YouTube and it's also supposed to be on Chrome. But I don't know about anybody else, but I've minimized it and then gone off to other screens and it's just not worked. So there seems to be quite a lot of problems around it still when they really shouldn't given how long it's been out and the fact that mobile devices can work it out pretty easily. I have mentioned this extension before, specifically in one of my recent videos talking about 10 cool Chrome extensions. So if you want to check that out, I'll put the link popping up right here. So definitely recommend that. But anyway, let's keep going. Next up, we have a little Easter egg having to do with the robots.txt file on YouTube. If you're not familiar, most websites have a robots.txt file where if you just go to the main domain slash robots.txt, this is a text file that lists out directories on the website that it does not want search engines to index. And as a side note, these aren't like secret directories or anything. It's not like to prevent Google from finding any secret info on these pages. It's mostly just to prevent the search engine from using up resources, scouring random useless pages with nothing important on it. Anyway, the real Easter egg here is at the top, obviously, where you can see it says created in yeah, on YouTube, we would really appreciate if you removed our channel name from that list, which it seems like it's probably on there. Things that don't get picked up by the general search engine. Yeah, I think you've definitely got us listed on there. I think it's about time you released us from prison now. <laughs> Thank you, YouTube. In the distant future, the year 2000, after the robotic uprising of the mid-90s, wiped out all humans. So just a funny little thing. All right, I think we're up to number eight, so we got a few more. And this next one is a hidden page on YouTube that allows you to opt in and test out experimental YouTube features. So to get to it, you go to youtube.com slash new. And this basically replaces the old YouTube test tube, it was called, where there was a little link kind of at the bottom of the YouTube page that would take you to be able to test out new features, whereas that link does no longer exist. The only way to get to it now, as far as I know, is to just know this URL. And then it'll tell you on here, you can try out experimental features if there are any available. Now at the moment, when I'm looking at this, there are none available, it just says check back later, but maybe depending on when you're watching, you can opt into some. And also at the bottom notice, there is a link to be able to participate in some user research studies by Google. So that'll take you to a page where it tells you more and allows you to sign up. I've done a few of these over the years, but don't expect these to come very often. I'm talking like maybe one once a year I'll get invited to one of these things. So these used to be a lot more popular and you would get invites through quite often. But also just for the actual kind of you know the beta projects and stuff like that, you used to see them advertised a lot more often on Google and YouTube and all of the other apps and all of the other stuff that was being developed. I don't know what 
eight years ago up until perhaps two years ago, and then it seemed to just stop. The beta versions of things don't really seem to be rolled out anymore, or at least not on the same scale. And they basically just kind of show you a feature, ask your thoughts about something or whatever. But still, if you're interested in kind of sharing your thoughts on some new features that they might want to ask you about, this is a good way to sign up for that. All right, so moving on, this next one also has to do with experimental features, but not the kind you opt in for, but rather the kind that YouTube just kind of imposes on a select group of people, calls it an experiment, and basically observes how people act with these new features to determine whether or not they should implement it to a larger group of people. But what you might not have known is YouTube actually publishes a list of most of the experiments they're running on their YouTube help form in a certain post on there. So if you do see some weird feature that you're not sure if anyone else has, you're like, this is new and then no one else seems to know about it, you can actually check on this forum post to see if there is an experiment going on that describes what you're seeing and then you can know, oh, it's an experiment they're doing and then you can know that you can submit feedback and they'll definitely be looking at that feedback because you're part of the... Yeah, on average, they tend to seem to run those sort of um, little small tests in the US. They don't tend to, or at least they don't do it in the UK very often. Whether they do it in other countries, I'm not sure, but it does seem to, for us, it seems to be confined more to the US than what it does the UK. I don't remember the last time we saw anything like that pop up on the UK version of YouTube. The experiment. So I will put a link to this post in the description so you can see for yourself and maybe bookmark it or something. And the important thing to know is they don't really usually tell you that you're doing an experiment. You just kind of have to know whether by noticing something different or looking at this page and then seeing that, oh, wow, I didn't even notice that was different, but now you know. Okay, finally, number 10. This is another one having to do with experimental features that you might not have known about, and it is you can actually opt in to use the beta version of YouTube apps on your phone, both iOS and Android. With Android, it's really easy. I'll put a link to the help page in the description describing how to opt in and opt out. But basically you go to the opt-in page, you just click join, and then on your Android phone, you just check for an app update for YouTube and it will replace the regular version with the beta version and just reinstall it. So then you'll have the beta version on your phone. Now for iOS, it's a little bit different though because Apple does beta apps a little bit differently. So with this, if you're using an iPhone or iOS device, you go to the site preview apps Dot with google.com and this is Google's site for getting beta versions of all Google apps including YouTube so even though it's not google.com with Google is still a Google owned domain so you basically click get access and then you select what kind of device you're using and you can select multiple and which beta apps you want to test and you can select one of the YouTube ones but unlike on Android where it just replaces the app on your phone with iOS, it actually uses Apple's Test Flight app, which is a way to separately test other versions of apps. And the page will talk about this before you download it. So basically you install the Test Flight app and then whatever apps you have signed up to beta test will show up in this app and then you run it from there, not from the home screen. Yeah, but like I say, even when you actually go to them to kind of, you know, take part in the different tests and stuff like that, there doesn't seem to be anywhere near as much running now as what there was just a couple of years ago. I don't know whether that's because they're now just building on the programs that were originally being established and now they're big enough programs so they don't really need to run any tests like that. They're just kind of trying to slowly expand them out a little bit more and just padding them out, I guess, rather than rolling out completely fresh apps, which is a bit of a pity because, you know, that led to some really great stuff that we now have on our computers and phones. And if we're not seeing so much of that now, then that makes you wonder if we're kind of, you know, starting to run into a little bit of a dry spot as far as the innovation goes. So you don't have to completely replace the regular app on your phone with the beta one. You'll just access the beta one if you want through the test flight launcher. So I think that's kind of nice. It just keeps them a little bit separate if you don't want to use the beta the whole time. But anyway, yeah, I'm sure you did not know about all 10 of these secrets. If I missed one, definitely let us know down in the comments and also check in the comments too, because maybe someone found one that I didn't even talk about. If you want to keep watching, the next video I'd recommend is that one I mentioned before talking about 10 cool Chrome extensions. So if you like the picture in picture, Okay, I think he's pretty much at the end of his video. So if you come across any little tricks and secrets that you didn't know existed, like making this screen flash. Be interesting to know whether all of these secrets and Easter eggs still exist. This video is not that old, it's only a couple of years old, and a lot of the stuff that he's talking about still exists and still being used anyway. But a few of the things like the font on the video 
I'm not sure if that's still there because YouTube have done some quite big updates in the past year. So I'm not sure if that's managed to make it through that update. Hopefully it has. Somebody will have to check and leave in the comments whether it still looks just as good as it used to with the only unique font on YouTube. Okay, if you've enjoyed this video, it's been a little bit different, then don't forget to click thumbs up and for more, don't forget to subscribe. The video that we've got coming up within the next few days is going to be talking about YouTube's algorithms and the Shorts program and the monetization throughout Shorts, how YouTube are trying to link the Shorts and the long content videos together to make it a little bit easier for creators to be able to explore and create Shorts without losing out because they take quite a lot of time. Okay, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.